Would you believe me if I told you that this photo was actually taken in the middle of the road, in the middle of a busy street with a really nasty background? We made it happen. I'm going to show you how. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Caitlin James, and this is a place where we like to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in to the behind the scenes of our everyday life. This is another episode of Behind the Image. I love, love, love this series because I get to take individual images and replay in my mind how this came to be, how we made it work, and what obstacles we overcame. So I'm going to break down this image. I'm going to explain to you um, a few key things that were problems and how we found solutions um, at the very end of this wedding day. This was the last portrait I took of the two of them, and it was one of my favorites. So you're going to see some of me shooting this image behind the scenes. We actually have footage from the wedding day. We we're stealing this from a KJ All Access episode. If you don't know what KJ All Access is, it is a online membership where photographers, over 3000 of them, watch me every month photograph weddings and portrait sessions and learn being my virtual third shooter, watching me shoot from behind the scenes and then hearing me do voiceovers and explain, okay, I did this here for that reason. I'm using this lens for that reason, stuff like that. So, so we're stealing some behind the scenes footage from this wedding. I want you to watch it and then we're going to dive into dissecting this photo and what made it look the way it looks. So you guys could stand right here and I'm going to shoot through this, but it would mean you might need to be on the ground a little bit. Michael, I might need your help holding yep. this out. You'll be chest to chest. You know what's so nice be... is that you don't have a part. Where do you want them? Right here. Oh, so all like, in it. Like right here. Yeah. There you go. Let's in see. It. Let's see if I can do this. I want to be taller. <laughs> I want to be taller than you. Okay, let's see here. Maybe take one step back. And like this way? Back towards the church. I'm sorry, I didn't give you clearance. Gotcha. There you go, perfect. So Michael, can we break this piece off? <laughs> Guys, we're getting real technical here. All right, Michael, so let me see if I can do this. I think I can fit them in there. Go ahead and wrap. Did you tell us to do this? No, you just did it. Tommy was like, all right, go ahead. I love that. This is it. I You're actually, like eyes, did I just miss yeah. it? <laughs> can you, Michael, hold it up really high, but hold it not like too far, just right there. Okay, perfect. So you can actually throw both your arms around his okay. neck. You can both tilt towards me though a little bit so I can see your faces. Your foreheads can touch. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Stay just like you are. We're almost done. People are going to be like, what are those crazies doing? Couple more. One forehead kiss. He's so good at that. You just relax here for two seconds. I'm just focusing on a few things. Oh my gosh. Guys, I've never done a willow tree shot in the middle of the road. You can look at each other, smiling at each other. Now, Michael, like, did we miss this? Can you do something a little harder for me? Keep that branch up. But we're going to block the darkness of the bridge in the background by doing that. Okay, here we go. Forehead to forehead. Michael, let the veil fall a little lower. I lied a little higher. Just like that. If we can separate it, here we go. Hold that up so it'll be a little fuller. Okay, guys, I am so picky. Michael's gonna laugh at me on the whole way home. One forehead kiss. Beautiful. She's gonna look over her right shoulder. Gorgeous. Emmy, you might wanna get a wide shot of this. And Kayla is smiling at me. You are not gonna believe these. Go ahead and, um, it's gonna sound weird, chest up first. Now, now lean into him. Oh, oh my gosh, yes, Nuzz he's nuzzling in. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. How is this happening? Tommy's smiling at me. Beautiful. He's smiling at me. And then you can smile at him. This is his moment. You can actually kiss him on the cheek, your husband. And y'all can share a sweet kiss, but you can hold her face. I don't know if we did this during engagements. Oh, oh, he knows. Gorgeous. Smiling afterwards. I'm going to do a vertical. Beautiful. And keep holding her face, but you can do a forehead kiss. And the thumb can actually go on her earlobe, if that's all right. Yes. Oh, hold tight, you two. Smiling at each other, and you're going back to one soft kiss. Smiling afterwards. And you're done. Yay, you did it. Awesome. You're not going to you're not going to believe this. This is like the, Yeah. Do you take one for memory's sake? Please. I love that. I'm like, wow, he's, he's more like sentimental than I thought. All right, so you saw me photograph this image 
from behind the scenes, I want to break down some key things that I was looking for um, as I was photographing this image. Also, some things that were really frustrating to me and how I fixed them. So when I look at this image, the first thing I notice is how soft it feels. Now there was not a lot, there weren't a lot of elements in this location to make it soft. The only way I um, could see to make the image look soft is to use your veil and to create foreground. The only way to create foreground was to shoot with this willow tree that was slightly hanging off the road. But I quickly realized there wasn't enough willow tree hanging off the road to do like the traditional willow tree shot where you back up and all the reeds are blowing in the wind. No, I had to use the compression of my lens and create my own softness. And the way that I did that um, was by making sure that there were reeds in front of the couple and behind the couple. All right, so this is in front, and then this was behind. These were behind, these were in front. And so that's really important. A lot of times people want to create the foreground, they wanna create layers and depth in their images, but they don't realize that you have to strategically place your clients in between certain types of aspects of the photo in order to create that look. So I put them in the reeds. I didn't put them all the way in front of the reeds and I didn't put them complete, completely behind the reeds because then it'd be kind of this weird like green in the foreground and like nothing in the background. So I try to place my couples in the midst of the reeds that are hanging from the willow tree. My second issue was that while we have some greenery back here and some of the lines of the bridge that make this a little bit brighter and airier, this area over here was a really big dark patch. It was another building, it wasn't pretty, it was heavy. And so as I got them in position, I was making a lot of decisions on the fly, like orientation, how close I'm gonna shoot, what lens I'm gonna shoot with, how can I place them in the reeds to create the foreground that I want, the layers that I want. But I was also thinking, I gotta get rid of that heaviness. And after 13 years of shooting, I've learned to use the veil to my advantage. So by adding the veil and having Michael pull the veil, the lines that it's creating here are lead lines to the couple, but it's also creating a really great distraction from the fact that the background behind that veil was not ideal, right? It wasn't. Think about this image, but think about this whole section being dark and heavy, right? It just would not look the same. The reason why your eyes and your focus go towards the couple is because everything around them is pushing you towards them. It's bright, it's airy, and it's kind of framing them. The whole framed feel that you get looking at this photo is because there's nothing distracting to pull your eyes away from the two of them. That's really important. If you didn't have the veil, you would have this big, dark, like, you know, blob in the corner and it just wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same effect. So another thing that I wanted to focus on here was the fact that I needed to shoot close and tight and with high compression. So I remember being in this setup and it's not just that I needed to crop up and crop close to get rid of extra distractions. It was also that there was a slant downward. So like the, the road was slanting downwards. And so I just was not in a good place to be able to shoot them full body and shooting them full body. I just could not hide everything. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, I'm very limited. I've got to shoot close and tight. So not only do I need to get closer and use a higher compression lens, I also need to place them in the right position with the reeds. I also need to make sure that I'm shooting and cropping above the waist so I don't see nastiness of the road behind them. I also need to make sure that they're in a pose that allows me to clearly see both of them that looks natural cropping so tightly. I mean, if you look at it, I'm really, I cropped out her elbow. That's how tight and close I am. His head is really close to the top of the frame. And so I'm really close. I'm zooming in and I'm doing that purposefully in order to hide anything in the background. I know from years of shooting, I know like if I really want to hide something and distract from the location that I'm shooting in, the closer I get to my client, the more the background melts away. And so that's what I was practicing here. And then I took extra elements like the reeds and the veil, and it all came together to create a portrait that I was proud of. The reason why I'm extra proud of this is because majority of the wedding day was shot in a, an industrial setting. So um, kind of like we were on a wharf, like a dock, a dock um, outside of Baltimore. We had brick, we had like kind of a metal background, like metal shutters. Um, we had nothing soft and romantic. And this is my soft and romantic look and I had to fight for it. There was nothing easy about getting this couple soft, romantic, light, kind of fluffy images, but we made it work. And we made it work with just a few hanging branches in the middle of the road in busy 
downtown Baltimore. And I'm thrilled with this. So what are three things that you can take away from this image? One, use the veil to your advantage. Veils can create magic. I tell people all the time, if I have a long veil, even if I just have like a shorter veil, I, I can do wonders with a veil. Use it to block distractions, use it to create foreground and use it to soften your images. Secondly, if you find yourself in a situation where you have low laying, low lying branches, do not put your clients in front of them, slightly place them into the reeds so that you're creating foreground. Last but not least, the third tip is to start training your eye to pay attention to details while you're shooting. Because while I'm shooting, this was the last image of this whole series and it, everything I was doing was leading up to this. I was shooting and I'm like, oh, I need to address this. Shooting and being like, mm, that's not great. And then looking for ways to fix what I didn't love, finally got the veil, got them in position, got them in the right pose, made sure the reeds were falling in the right place, the right settings and bam, we got the final image that we love. Now, this image is not my best image of all time, but I'm proud of it because of the obstacles I overcame to shoot it. I know what this what this place looked like. I remember pulling into this venue being like, where the heck am I gonna shoot? And then realizing, well, there's a few little branches there. Maybe I can make something magical happen and then I made it happen. But that never would have happened if I had not taken the time to pay attention to what I didn't like while I was shooting and find solutions in camera. You cannot, you could, but I don't recommend it. You can't just blur the side of a frame and get rid of distractions. Using the veil was a great way to find a solution, but to naturally use what was organically happening. So I hope you love this. I hope you enjoyed this. This is one of my favorite series because I get to break down what I love most about being an artist, being creative and being a wedding photographer. So if you enjoy this, we tend to be doing this every few weeks because it's so much fun for me. So make sure that you subscribe, Make sure you don't miss one in the future and we will have a new video for you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.